No, no, my hoki my akite ne kaupapa planting seeds for this uh, particular space of Fridge the Gap. And very fortunate uh, to have this sis, um, Holly, join us uh, this morning. So, welcome, sis. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Are you feeling a little bit nervous? <laughs> now I am, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm good, thank you. Nah, stoked to have you on here. And um, we've known each other just for a little while, but sort of like passing by almost. But it's it's been cool just to to jam with you and, and get to know you just a little bit more uh, before we came into this kaupapa and you've got a story to share man and you've got a lot of energy like where does all this energy come from for you? I have, not, God, I have no idea cups of coffee maybe but no. <laughs> <laughs> have you always just been naturally sort of energised or optimistic because that's the kind of vibe I get from you? Yeah I guess so when I'm when I'm by myself, though, I'm a totally different person. True. So it's weird when I'm at work, yeah. But so I, what does it look like when you are by yourself? What are things that you like to do? I just chill. I think when you're just the hype woman all day, every day, I get home and I'm just like... Just chill, Just, just chill, like feet go up. Netflix is on. It's just like... It's nice. and quiet. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool having those two different um, spaces, though, way, eh? like one space where you're at mahi and when you're around other people, you're just that person for them. But when you're all behind closed doors, there's that space where you can just be with yourself and just fill up yourself and rest if you need to, right? Yeah, and get ready for the next lot of vibes and hype to bring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're in the sort of like fitness space and your owner here in Aotearoa, oh, in Rotorua, I was going to say Aotearoa, <laughs> <laughs> but in Rotorua of F45. And, you know, talk a little bit about your fitness journey, you know, because there's a story there. And so have you always been into fitness or was there something that actually, like, really pushed you more into it with a bit more intensity? Um, yeah, I guess I've always been into health and fitness. Um, and then it wasn't until my brother was killed over in Afghanistan that that's when my real drive for health and fitness really like evolved like a hundred so yeah that wow. was my turning point in it all. Mm. And so you know hearing you know something like that you know from your whanau and just being told those kinds that kind of news you know it's that sort of phone call you just don't want to get right and so yeah. you know for you how did you sort of process you know that the loss of your brother? Um, the When we got the phone call, uh, I pretty much put on my running shoes and I took off out my house and down the driveway and I just ran. And that was the only way at that time I could cope with everything. That was just like pushing myself. And I had to be strong for everyone else in my family at that time. And so the only way I could kind of offload how I was feeling was through, well, training, basically. Yeah. Wow. And so, you know, there is something that, that you unlock when you're in that space of pushing yourself physically mm. because there's a lot of noise in terms of your mind can, you know, say a lot of things and then you feel a certain way. But when you push yourself physically, it helps you to self-regulate. It helps you to, to let go or, or figure out, like, what's the true noise. And, and for you, what did you learn in that whole space of pushing yourself physically? Um, I guess during that time, it was just, I knew that it, nothing was hard, oh, well, you know, going to the gym, I could push myself physically because nothing was harder than what I had had to go through with my family. So the weight was always light. Um, running for miles was easy. Um, pushing myself through hit training was easy, a little bit of crossfit, that was easy because it was hard. Everything else that I had gone through with my family was hard. So training was the easiest part I could do. Like it was the easiest part. Yeah. Wow, man, I'm just like so blown away because, you know, when we, when we go through sort of life challenges, it seems to sort of carry so much weight that it doesn't help us to move at all. You yeah. know, a, a lot of people might go in the opposite direction, whereas you're able to evolve and transmute that kind of experience into something that was of so much benefit and value for your own wellness. Yeah, I guess like having my, I guess the exterior of what I have, like with, through my health and fitness, it's just the armour that's been built because internally it was hard and I had to 
build myself up on the inside. So whatever everyone sees, like when they say, you know, you do all this stuff with the gym and that's been built up. Like it's just my armour that I've got because it's been, it's been hard the last 10 years, yeah. Wow. And so you've been able to push yourself in other areas, but in a way it's 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 sort of helped you process with the healing 100%. of not only what you've lost, but your whanau and, and going through the things of, of losing your brother. And, and I heard or I've seen that you started to do a walk in his honour. Yeah. Like, like, talk about that. Oh, it was a crazy idea I had. Um, I had his, um, they call it the Alice Packs. It's an army pack. And I had it at my house. I threw it on. I chucked a kettlebell in it. And I just started to walk. So I walked from my house in Kawaro out towards Teteko, out Texas ways. And I just walked. And then a lot of people were like, we'd walk with you. You know, let's do this together. And I thought, well, if I've got a little group, imagine how much more people want to walk with us, you know, and that's kind of how that happened. It was carrying the weight on my shoulders and then I realised soon that everyone else had the same weight. Wow. And so was this like a yearly thing that you started to do? Yeah, or? yeah. It was, um, we did it around the anniversary of him, um, which was around the 19th of August. And then it was annual and then COVID, but yeah. We've started it back up now. Oh, have you started it back up? Yeah, we did it one this year, yeah. And how was that turn out? How was that for you? Because I've having like a couple of years off with COVID and things of that nature. And so how was it to come back to that space and to, to get back into it? Um, it's always hard. I just know that what it means for everyone else, um, for my, myself and my family, it's always hard to have to go back because... Although it happened so long ago, it's it's always really raw. It feels like it only happened the other day. But I do know that there's uh, so many people out there that need the walk more than what I do sometimes, yeah. Well, it just seems as though you've just got this natural feeling of, like, service, you know, like you do think of, you know, how you just sort of said, you know, it's hard for you, but you think of other people and, and what they're carrying and, you know, is that something that's been natural for you or is that something that you've sort of grown into just to be that way inclined? I think it's, I've, I've, yeah, probably natural. I've always just been like that, more so since the loss of him, um, wanting, knowing that I wasn't alone and that my whole family wasn't alone in our grieving, grieving process. So wow. it was all about just helping yeah, everyone else. It always has been. <laughs> And you said that, you know, you got a whare in Kauero, but you grew up in Te Teko, <laughs> the heart of Texas. <laughs> Centre of the universe, they say. <laughs> yeah. You know, so what was your upbringing like, sis? Like, how was it growing up in Te Teko and growing up in that area of Kauero, Edgecombe? Um, I wouldn't say it was the best, you know. Um, my mum raised us, me and my brothers, by herself. And then we made the move to Kauero, Um and did a very short stint at um, college, Hcom College, and then that was that was pretty much it. It was my little life, yeah. Too playful, eh? Too oh, playful so for school. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> my social life outside of school was, yeah, way more important than <laughs> being in a classroom environment. <laughs> I think that's just quite choice how it's just naturally sort of progressed, how you sort of said how your social life was just something that you just, it just you were able to thrive. And now you're an owner of a... Uh, a business or a gym mm. that just thrives of the social aspect of a group fitness, you know. I never looked at it that way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've just always been drawn to vibes, energy, good yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, when you look at it that way, I never really thought of it myself. But mm -hmm. yeah. And so now you're an owner of, of a F45 but business, a gym, like that's been such a, like, there's been a wave of like F45. Everyone knows what it is now, but yeah. it it didn't just. It feels like it just came out of nowhere, you know, over <laughs> the like the last like five years or ten years or however long it's been around. But like, what's your journey with um, F45? What my journey from yeah. the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. did you were you like a member at one point? No, and, nah. no. I started like just running um, women's boot camp. So we I had like this little Wahine Warriors little fitness group back in Koldo, and then. Um, F45 Rotorua approached me and they were like, you know, you should come over here and give this a go and we could really use your energy in here. And then four years later, that's where I've always been, yeah. Wow. Well, back and forth through. And you also said off the mic that 
you were doing full-time hairdressing yeah. during this as well. So you've been in the whole beauty space, yep. you know, before coming into that whole fitness space. And so, like, for you being in that beauty, like, what did you like about being a hairdresser? Or what drew you into into that space? Um, so I became a hairdresser because my mum was a hairdresser as well. So she started at the same kind of age as me, um, and she still does it to this day, you know. And... It was kind of like, yeah, I just did what my mum did, basically, because I was brought up in a salon. Yeah. So, yeah. And like Hinepane, like I was just telling you as well, <laughs> Hinepane just got a bit of a haircut and she just wanted to get like a nice little wash, bit of a clean. And she was talking about because she hadn't been in because of COVID and everything like that. And so I went and got her like this voucher for her birthday. Yeah. And so she went in and she just got like a nice um, clean. And then she said to the edges, oh, can we just cut it to here? <laughs> Next minute, it's like way shorter than she wanted. So like, what is it with like hairdressers who tend to cut their hair shorter than they need to? I think some hairdressers see measurements different to what <laughs> our, what our clients think. So I think that's where it gets confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for so, sure. So it's just I wasn't a bit more like clear, right? Eh? Yeah, be very specific. <laughs> Pull out a ruler. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good way. That's yeah. a good way. And so now going into leaving that mahi, you've been mm. for fifteen years, and now you've moved from an instructor into now owning you know a gym and like what's that transition was this something that you saw yourself sort of stepping into or did it just sort of happen did the opportunity open up for you I didn't know it never came to us um and I never thought that we could do anything that we've done like owning an F45 um it took a whole lot of people behind myself and my husband to get to where we are now so I can't really take credit for just you know me, me doing it um, but I didn't really see myself ever being in this position It's crazy <laughs> eh? I was, yeah. I've, I've had very similar thoughts myself and like I think about you know the 9 year old version of me or, or even like the 22 year old version of me mm. like no way, no way did I see myself where I'm at now you know yeah. being able to do what I'm doing the life that I live and it's just such a trip how life can just happen and it can just unfold and you just end up where you end up. Yeah, bro. Know? Yeah, that's it. It is a trip. That's <laughs> a, it so is. I never would have thought, like, you know, the 15-year-old me that left high school and just had this crazy social life. And I don't know, I never would have thought that I would be where I am now. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. With you to have a, do you have a growth mindset or do you feel like you're more just taking life as it comes? Like, are you real intentional with where you want to be and where you want to go? Or are you just more so like just going with the flow? I was going with the flow, and like so, but no, not now. I'm definitely just, yeah, trying to grow and trying to do more and, yeah, t not taking every day as it comes. Well, I guess so, taking every day as it comes, but they're not really... I guess I'm a little bit of a mixture. It's a balancing. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a balancing act between the two of them. Yeah. I suppose it's because when you have more responsibility, you have to be a bit more planned. You know, like you've got yeah. staff, you've got classes to run, you've got members, you've got your family, yeah. and so now you're, it's just not you and being a worker and all of those kinds of things because it is a completely different way of approaching your day-to-day -day life. And I guess, like, what have you been able to um, see or improve from being an instructor, being at, at a space where you're just there for the people and now you're an owner? Like, what are the changes you've made as a as an owner within the industry? I think for me, the biggest one is letting everyone have a voice um, and not not having it my way. This is how it should be. Not having robotic standards and making sure that everyone's doing it one way. I think it was letting everyone have their opinion, have a voice. Tell me what could work. What could we change? What could we do that could make it better? And it was about listening to not just my staff, but our members as well, what they wanted, you know, and in making sure that we could adapt and change and do those things to make it work for everyone. Yeah. Wow. I think that's like so key for you to already have that understanding because, you know, I reflect on my short little life and being an entrepreneur and how often I failed to listen. 
and how much more challenges that just provided like for the business but more so like with myself and the person I didn't listen to was my <laughs> wife you know who was like just in the business just as much as me yeah and so the moment that I just let go of that and just started to listen not only did the business go in a better direction but she found space where she could just be like oh yeah I contributed to this or yeah. you know my idea was heard or my opinion was heard and that does something you it know elevates just, it that elevates yeah. everything eh? and so for you to have that already and for you to have this like full-on vibe and being open and your ability to grow and nurture it's it's pretty cool to to get to know this this part of you and talk about the actual um, environment because I love group fitness. Like, I love training by myself. Like, I can just go to the gym and I can put in headphones and I can just get a bit of a pump, you know? <laughs> be a little bit of a rap okay. star with yeah, the yeah. headphones See on. the mirror there and just be like, oh, yo, yo. You know, I, I, I enjoy that too. Yeah. But there's something about going into group fitness. Like, I love CrossFit. I've been into F45. But there is a social well-being in those kinds of environments you know you get to catch up with mates you have a bit of banter you know you start your day off in that kind of way you build new relationships connections and so is that the thing that drew you into um was that something you notice like within that environment yeah definitely i've always said that f45 isn't like a gym it's more it's your community it's whanau um yeah it's this is something about team training that makes it different to anything else and I'm the same as you like I can easily go into a gym and stay there for like an hour and train with my headphones on but when I'm in a group setting environment I don't know it's something different especially when you're trying to one up the what person next to yeah. you <laughs> oh man I love that but then I'm at a stage now sis, where I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go beneath my ego you know like cause mm. the ego wants to like beat the bro or like you see the bro with a bit of weight on and you're like oh yeah I'll do that but at the end of the workout you're like shattered oh yeah you know and Broken. you feel way worse yeah and so I'm in a space at the moment where my mantra to myself is like stay in your lane bro yeah just stay in your lane you know just scale the weight if you need to you know yeah. scale the movement if you need to because I want to get to the end of my workout knowing that I've pushed myself yeah but I want to leave feeling good not feeling like absolutely defeated because I didn't finish the workout because their weight was too heavy. Yeah. You know, so. They're going to moderate pace, say, slow it down. Yeah. (laughs) But I also like how there's a place of belonging in a gym, you know, because as you've gone through your challenges, I think every single person has like life challenges where they've got the pressure of mahi, they've got the pressure of this or that, they have to be this person for that person. But when they can come into, I guess, a space where they can let go. And you know this better than anyone. Mm. You know, you're providing that space for people. So it's so cool how there's been like a full circle experience, you know, for you that's just unfolding like right now. Yeah. So unfolding right now. (laughs) Like You just sort of like, whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Even I'm like, you're just putting everything into perspective for me because I just look at it and I just think like I go go there every day with the intention to change someone's life. It's never just about, I don't know. And it's just crazy how you're putting it all into like a different way of me seeing it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I am doing that kind of stuff. (laughs) But it's just I love doing what I do every day. It's so so for you to say that. I'm like, oh, wow. And do you feel there's like a reciprocation because people are coming in with the intention of wanting to make better life changes and improving their health and you get to see firsthand how people come in yeah and then you see their progress yeah like how does that make you feel I I love it honestly I don't even know how to explain it it's just yeah like you said we see them from day one they'll start off doing something they're trying to figure everything out and then you see them at the end of a challenge even and you're just like holy oh I can't say that word but you know (laughs) holy moly yeah (laughs) And you're just like, that, how did you get from there to there? Like, in this amount of time, it, that's the rewarding part of it. And I love that. I love seeing their journey with us and how far we've made our members come, you know, because like you said, they all walk in there with with something, you know, and it's up to us to change that. And wow. so I love, that's what I love about it, is getting in there every day with that intention to change their lives because... I love it. And I, I really I really enjoy the whole transformation process. And we think that, man, 
we see where we are at step one and we can sort of see or we have this idea of where we want to be. And that might be mm-hmm. like step 10 or in some cases step 20. You know, that's having that kind of energy you want, that's having the body you want, that's having the mindset you want. But sometimes it just feels so far. And mm-hmm. then you come in and then you do a challenge where it's like a six week or eight week or 12. And then you get the changes that you want, but it's actually not that much time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like six weeks or however long the challenges are, you can get so much significant change yeah. in such a short period of time. But oh, yeah. we just perceive that we're so far behind from where we actually are. Yeah. And I think that's where we come into play. That's right. The yeah. support, eh? Yeah. Like we've seen you from when you first walked in here, like, you know. So, yeah, for sure. And do you guys do like challenges often or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's like a couple a year, which is. Yeah, they're always fun. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're neat. And what, what do you feel helps with, um, like, because we can make amazing changes, mm. but there's this pendulum where you can either carry on with good habits or we feel we've got it sussed and then we celebrate too much oh, and yeah. then the pendulum <laughs> swings the other way and we go back to, like, square one. <laughs> like, what are some words around how we can better oh. prepare ourselves for that? I wouldn't. Have, that's a hard one because there's so many the, the varieties in our gym. You know, we've got some that are to stay consistent throughout, even after a challenge. And you got those ones that do, you know, fall off for that break between the next challenge, and then they do the next one. So, I guess there's no real way to kind of tell people where they should or shouldn't be because yeah. I guess individually, you know what you're capable of, you know what your body can do, and I think it's just up to you how consistent you follow through with everything. It's up, you know, but we're there to support you. Yeah. But it's up to the individual at the end of the day. That's right. And so yeah. the word that came out that I just really grabbed there was like consistency. Yeah. You know, because if like when because I'm a, I'm on a challenge at the moment I'm doing 75 hard yeah, I don't right know how you're doing that I've, I've got 10 <laughs> more days to go so it's 10 more days so and, and I'm feeling like amazing you know yeah. like I got all this energy I can feel like just the mental clarity I'm, I feel spiritually open That's I feel cool. like I'm just in a very beautiful space and state and I know it's going to come to the end and I know in the past when I've done like an eight week challenge I got diced up in the same space. And then I celebrated too much and then I went back to square one and I just went into a bad mental head state, Hmm. right? I went in the opposite direction. And it was just because I thought that I got it. Like I know how to get it. I know what I need to do, but I just didn't plan well enough for the after. And so the way I'm approaching this one is that word consistency, Yeah. right? What I'm doing at the moment is quite full on, but going ahead is if I can just be consistent with small habits, not be so hectic, then I feel I'll be able to sustain like changes and the amount of growth that I've received so far. Yeah, Do you feel that's probably like something that everyone could relate to is just sticking consistent with things that are manageable? Yeah, I think so, for sure. That would be the ideal situation there, yeah. Being more consistent, but not being too hard on yourself. Wow. Scale it back a little bit, yeah. And so what does consistency look like for you? Like, you are, like you're on the floor a lot. Mm. You travel, you know, to mahi sometimes. So how do you manage your balance of well-being with everything that you've got going on? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm doing it. Um, just massive support for me to be able to do what I'm doing, to be able to train, travel, um, holding it down at Mahi. I think it's just for me to make sure that I can be consistent throughout everything is having the support behind me or else I couldn't do it. Wow. Yeah. So do you wake up at a certain time? Like what does a day look like for you? Like what does, like on a very good day, a, a day that would just be like the perfect layout for you? you know, but one that seems to be the most common. Like, what does that look like for you? Do you wake up at a certain time? What are you eating? When do you train? Like, what does it look like? Break it down for us. Okay, so if I'm on a morning shift, so, and I'm in Colorado, it's a 3 a.m. wake-up call on the road by 3.30. Here at Osuro by 4.25, 4.30. Coaching for the first four, three classes, have a break. Next lot of classes, have a break. And do in between all those breaks and running admin, replying to emails, um, and then doing the lunch class, 
And then by then I'm pretty tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then it's lunchtime, so I've got to eat. Um, and then after that, I usually will go and do my training somewhere between lunchtime and the next class. The next class. But I also try and make sure that I practice what I preach. So I make sure I hit any 45 class as much as possible. There's no point in me yelling at people saying, do this and do that. And I can't even <laughs> do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, there was this one time we were doing um, F45 during COVID and I got the mean feels, eh, because one of the instructors just kept picking on me and I just went out of camera and I just got really upset. I was like, you know, you're just like beating down on me, but like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's important as a coach to yeah. make sure that we are doing, you know, practice what we preach. Yeah, yeah I think that's... I feel, again, that comes with the sense of accountability, yeah. responsibility is like, all right, you're doing this and you're helping other people and you're trying to make them, I guess, invite them into making better changes. But it does come back on you, eh? Like, how are we reflecting what it is that we're sharing in terms of how we're serving people? Like, how are we doing that for ourselves? And I think that's where we can get tripped up sometimes as if we're not showing up for ourselves in that way. Mm. Um, it makes it hard for us to have that level of consistency in terms of what we're sharing for other people. Yep, definitely. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what do you see for Rotorua um, F45? Oh, that's a good question. Is there any exciting things coming up? Because obviously you got that walk in August, so... Like, what do you got happening in the works for for your fellows members then? Um, at the moment, our biggest thing that we've got coming up is um, the F45 National Playoffs. So it's what like, is that? What is <laughs> so it? It's like a um, it's to see who's the fittest studio in New Zealand, basically. So we're definitely the fittest in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Get it, love it. <laughs> Um, so that's what we're kind of training for at the moment. We're getting all our members strong, fit, getting, doing all our little activities that we've got going in the gym to test their strength and um, all those other bits and bobs. But I say that's our thing we're working towards at the moment is Man. the national playoffs. And so is it um, as a collective or is there like your star athletes or like how does it get judged? Do you fellas do it as like a group of 10 or? Groups of five. So oh, right. as much groups as we want and there's no like anyone can do it. We don't say, oh, you, you know, only the fittest can count. Yeah. Cause that's, <laughs> nah. Nah, this is team A. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. So we yeah. have groups of five um, head down to Wellington at the end of September and, yeah, take home the win. Wow. Bring home the win, I should say. Sorry. Love that. Yeah. Are you competitive at heart, bro? Nah. You're not? Oh, I don't know. Like, so if I say rocks is paper right now, would you be like... No, nah, I am. Yeah, yeah nah. <laughs> I'm just having a think now, yeah, with my son and my husband playing those cards and... Paper scissors are up and out, yeah. But for a Have long a time, I was very much so someone who was like, no, nah, I'm not competitive. And then it wasn't until I was in this kaupapa, it was like a, um, it was called Tuia, it was a national Māori leadership sort of kaupapa. And at the end of it, there was um, like a prize giving and there was a certificate of like, who's the most competitive? And I was astounded that my name <laughs> was said. I was like, hey, am I competitive? And it wasn't until that moment that I realized, like, I just got to own it, you know? Like, I love being competitive. There's like more energy. There's this whole little um, thing that, that happens in that space. So yeah, it's interesting that you said, no, nah, I'm not. But saying that, you're like, no, nah, man. Yeah, I am, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. Oh, cool. And so... Um, how does it look for people to come in and, and join F45? Like, do you have to be a member to do these challenges or do you fellas have an online space or, like, how does how does it work for people who want to come and get involved? Oh, it's pretty easy. Like, they can just reach out to us on social media um, and to be – we have at the moment, like, we just have a seven-day trial that, um, that non-members can reach out and do if they want to and they can come in and have a little whirl in the classes. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'm always like preaching it on my socials, like just try it, like yeah, just hurry yeah. up and come play at the studio. <laughs> like, Stop wondering it. Eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like sometimes people can be a bit worried and think they have to be of a certain fitness level to do F45. And 
Anyone can do your 45. Because there's scaled options, eh? Like it doesn't matter if you're at a fitness level of 10 or like 2 because yeah. you guys have ways of breaking down movements that um, could be at their level, right? Yeah, 100%. So we're there to help scale the movements down, um, offer progressions and regressions for them. But anyone can do it. And I wish that people wouldn't be so scared. When they hear F45, I think they think, oh, it's high intensity, it's hit training, it's this and that. But you go at your own pace. And I, anyone can do F45. Me. Anyone. Yeah. Well, Holly, it's been mean to sort of like see you, um, I guess, just glow in this way, girl. Oh. And, you know, for you to share your story and... You know, even just stepping into this full circle moment of, of creating a beautiful environment for your employees and for your members and just with everything that you've been sharing, it just seems as though you're on the right path. Eh? And um, just want to continue to support you and for everyone that is listening, man, like get yourself in there for the seven day trial and feel the energy <laughs> because what yeah. I feel within leadership and spaces is that it really does start from the top and come down. And when I talk to you and I can just sort of feel your genuineness and wanting to see changes in other people and wanting to support them, it really just trickles down, you know, to your instructors and to your members. So it feels as though there's a great environment for people there to sort of be a better version of themselves in some way. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> and do you have any final words for our listeners in terms of, you know, anything that's on your heart, anything that you might want to share uh, that could, you know, potentially help them with whatever they're going through, if they're struggling and wanting to get into fitness? Like, any last words for, for the listeners? Um, goodness me. I think it would be just don't be afraid of change. That would be my biggest thing. And just giving everything a go and just... There's heaps of things I could say, but I think whether that would have to be my, one of my top ones is not to be afraid of change because I was afraid of all of this. And by stepping out, you know, look where we are now, you know, and I think I had to just do it, just do it and not be afraid of taking that big step into being a business owner. Yeah. Me, Holly. A- Thank you so much. Beautiful way to wrap it up into the fun. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Mauri Katoa. Choice.